What's happening, family? Welcome back to another episode of Let Us Tell It. I'm one of your hosts, Marcus Tanksley, a.k.a. Tank, and the other host is... Goose, How y'all doing? Already. Hey, if it's your first time tuning in, thank you for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. This is a podcast we do every week, mm-hmm. and uh, we talk about worldly topics. We talk about a little bit of everything. We talk about our experiences as husbands, fathers, uncles, brothers, uh, friends. Black men. African Americans, black men, mm-hmm. all of that jazz, and that's why it's called Let Us Tell It, because it's coming from us. Damn right. Uh, we usually kick this off with getting something off our chest. Goose, you got anything you want to get off your chest today? I do, man. Uh, dropping off McKinley at school yesterday, and I was on the side of uh, – there's homes across the street from the school. So when people, I wasn't dropping off, I was picking McKinley up. When parents come to pick up the kids, you know, they park any and everywhere to pick up their child. Right. It was a mad dash to leave. Yes. Yeah. But what blew my mind was that this lady pulled in to a driveway, into the driveway, parked got out and walked across the street the gates aren't open the kids aren't coming out so you're like you're about to be waiting for a while and i'm looking i'm like is let me not be all nosy this ain't had this has nothing to do with me yeah, whatever yeah. she probably knows this person right. now, this might be her house the kids start coming out and then the owner of the house comes out of his house and he's like you know i I'm looking at him, and he's looking at the car like, what's going on? So he looked in the car like, whose car is this? Why are they in my driveway? So right. I'm like, this lady had the audacity <laughs> to pull in the driveway, park the car, and go across the street into somebody's and not even care about what's happening. Yeah. I almost got out the car and like, hey, man, it's her. That's that southern shit. This is her right here. <laughs> That's that south. Boy. I want to I wanna <laughs> check this lady right yeah. now. Because it done got on your nerves. Hey, you yeah. feel like you, she done violated you. <laughs> that, what, what make you think you can do that? That's why I'm parked right here. Or that's why I come early so I can get this spot so I won't have to be driving around, pacing, or park all the way down the street. But if that would happen, I would park down the street yeah. and walk up here. Uh, That's the... Crazy bearded foodie. Oh, and welcome. He said it's his first live. He said he's in his son's uh, pickup line right now. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Those lives be crazy, but if you ain't getting there early, you got to wait in line yeah. or park down the street. Uh, that's another thing with L.A. I might have mentioned this before. California, people Man. parking in front of people's houses and then going to a house down the street as if. I don't. Yeah. In the South. Or just on the East Coast. Yeah, uh, I think through the South, Midwest, East Coast. I, I don't. I don't. I, this is the first time I've experienced that. Yeah. in California, you park in front of my house on the public street. I there's unwritten rule. I can come out my house. Hey, what's up? I, you need some help or something? Yeah. No, nah, man, I'm about to go to this house. Well, go park in front yeah. of this house. <laughs> I'm parking in front of mine. Right. I don't know who you are, what you got going on. You might be doing something down there and then run up here to take off. Or, mm-hmm. I don't know. But in L.A., literally, you'll have 10 cars parked on the street in front of homes in residential areas, and none of them live yeah. or even know the person on that street. They'll be down somewhere else uh-huh. doing whatever they're doing. That drives me crazy, man. Man, look, it's it's a thing. Like, where I'm from, same. Where I'm from, you park in front of the person's house that you go into. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, if I come to your house, the same way I come to Greg's house or anybody else's house, I usually just park in front of the driveway. Yeah. Because I tell people out here, man, just park in front of the driveway. Well, I didn't want to block y'all in. We having a party. Where the hell are we going? Yeah. If anybody leave, you going to leave. I ain't going nowhere. Every party you have at yeah. house, I'm like, Pull right, no, block us in. Yeah. And, and that's what I don't get is like, and I even even now, I've always done it since I moved to California. Like, I had to tell friends that that's from here, that live out here. It's like, when they come over to the house, man, don't park in front of the neighbor's house. Park in front of our house. Yeah. I had to tell people that. And I think I know what it is, Goose. What is it? It's from people living with lack of space. 
you know where you from, there's a lot of area. Uh-huh. People got room. They got big, a lot of space between the houses. They got open fields, big ass front yards and backyards. Yep. Because the layout's different. Out here, everything's crowded. So people just don't have that respect for <laughs> uh, uh, other people's space the way the same way we do. It's just like, no, nah, that's their thing. Let me let me not get in front of them. Out here, you got to. Mm. I think it's what it might be. I don't know. Because it, it, it blows my mind. It, I've even had, I've had friends literally, Kennedy's done it. I walk out front and I'm like, where's your car? It's down the street. Why? Why you do that, Kennedy? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Either two eleven three. I was it, it it's crazy. There's one thing parking in front of the house, but to park in the driveway. In somebody's driveway is insane. And not even I mean And leave the car. And I can see if you just pulled up to and, let your kid in and then back yes. out and left. All right. <laughs> yes. And that's what I thought. I thought this lady was about to pull in, back up, and go the other way just to keep yeah. doing, keep moving until the kids came out. She parked it. She got out, walked across the street, and waited, was just waiting. And I'm like, oh, she has to know this person. Got to. Got to be a cousin. Y'all, I know I'll be telling y'all, you know, it's a new age, new day. <laughs> Don't get angry about things. Just talk it out. Greg be bullshitting, y'all. He- <laughs> I would have something. I would have sat on that car hood or on the trunk and, and just and sat waited. Co- and waited for my ch- feet on the to bump come out. Just- something. <laughs> Pour me a cup or something. Put it on there. All right. Oh, this your car? Oh, okay. Well, you're going to wait till my child comes out. All right. So, you, ma'am. Folk crazy. Yeah, no, nah, I uh, folk is crazy. You parked in it's, my it's that audacity. I got some uh I've had like neighbors that had people over to their house and they were, you know, luckily I caught them before they walked they left the car because I wouldn't have known who. Well, I'd just been over there at their uh, gathering trying to figure out who the hell's white cause is because I keep a toe trap a toe strap in my truck. I will pull a car out the way if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> <laughs> give me some gas that ain't come what on. it's there for but I could use it for that it's in there in case I do need to help somebody out but yeah, that yeah. toe strap will come in handy Yeah. so luckily I caught this lady leaving her walking away from her car and I was like I pull up to my driveway Angel's there you know the, the car is basically damn near behind Angel and I was like excuse me you blocking my driveway mm. she's like oh and she, she was like I was, just, I was gonna move I was walking around to make sure I had enough room there is no way you had enough room behind that space ain't big enough. Yeah. So luckily she went on the move. Then she just pulled across and blocked them in. I'm like, yeah, that's where you going. I don't know if it's a foreign thing, but going to my child's plays, these uh, parents will parallel park. Me and Mel sat there and watched this. This lady backed in, boop, hit the car, mm-hmm. went forward, boop, hit the car, went back, boop, boop. I be, mean, and was just doing this until she got all the way in. That's there. a cultural thing. And then yeah. they all got out and was just like, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I'm like, it's a what's cult- happening? It's a cultural thing. Everybody don't value the same stuff, the same people. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was in this. Golly. This is back, uh, it was this one time, it was this uh, professor or instructor, whatever he was. He had a classic Corvette, right? Oh, I don't man. know, I can't remember which year it was. I just remember it being white. It was in real good condition. Mm. There was a dude that was in one of our classes. He was uh, African. And I remember we were st- sitting, standing outside, like, talking. He was sitting on this classic Corvette. It wasn't his. No, it was the instructor's. We all knew whose it was because every like every now and then on Thursday and Friday he would drive it. So we like, oh, you know, he brought brought the Corvette. And uh, dude, I can't remember his name. He's just sitting on the car, like holding a conversation, just sitting on the, with jeans. You know, jeans got yeah. stuck with jeans on them. So <laughs> like, I walk up and I see it. And I'm like, so everybody's sitting there talking, but we looking at him like, we said, hey man, you might want to get off of that car. He was like, basically, it's just a car. Why? Cause it's a cultural thing, like you know, it's, to it him, is. it's just a car. 
it's, it's not like a classic collectible, nothing valuable about it. It's just a vehicle. But, you know, to other yeah. people, it's like, no, that thing has value to it. Somebody done put a lot of time and money into that. <laughs> I ain't put no time and money into my last old school. It was a T-top cutlass with a blue door. It was burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> and it had a blue door on the said, side. No I, <laughs> hey, I could I ain't get it painted. <laughs> but let you sit on my no, car. Yeah. I act a fool. Yeah. Like, get all my cutlass, man. That's yeah, you beat up. Yeah, I don't I don't disrespect nobody's vehicle. A classic car. Yard. Too. I got a neighbor right now and I can't I to me it ain't worth the energy. Speaking of respecting area, he got this little bitty dog about the size of this damn cup. Mm. He walks up the street, right? I notice anytime we out there, you know, he just walks past the house. But if we, he don't think nobody's there or sees him, he'll walk up, let his dog pee in the yard. Mm. Which you might be thinking, it's just pee. I got kids. Okay, yeah. they come outside and play. And we got turf. We don't have grass. Oh, it ain't just soaking up in the It bed. ain't just, yeah, it just ain't it going away in the grass and worms and stuff. No, this is turf. So he'll walk, he'll, and there's been times I've, I, he'll be in front of the house with this little bitty dog. And then we'll pull up, he'll jump, you know, and then just keep walking. So last week, <laughs> no, nah, it, it was a couple weeks ago. I'm in the garage. I, I think I'm working on one of the cars doing something. Anyway, I'm standing in the garage and it's bright outside. So I'm in the, like the shade of the garage, but the door is up. So I'm standing there just watching him. He don't see me looking at him. So he walks up, stops, let his dog, his dog walks in the yard. So I just slid my foot, you know, just, go, just so you can hear it slide across the ground. He, he jumps. Yeah. <laughs> he's walking. So what I do? I was about to say something, but he's already like extremely awkward. Uh-huh. And I, this ain't no old. He, he's probably older than me, but he ain't no old man. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He looked like he might be a serial killer. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what I do? I just went and got me a whole bunch of uh, cayenne red pepper, cayenne pepper. I sprinkled that thing around all up through the yard. Mm-hmm. All up through the yard. Fuck that dog nose up. <laughs> I mean, I was sneezing just putting it out. I wasn't even nowhere near it. Sprinkle that all through the yard. But I'm going to say something to him next time I see him. Like, I didn't say this to, say stuff to the neighbors before. Um, Water. Oh. At my uh, old house. Mm. Like, hey, I appreciate it if you don't let your dog pee on me. Yard. And I was talking to the husband. And the wife was like, it's just pee. I said, I'm not talking to you. Oh, snap. I said, I have children. I don't want my dog, my kids playing in your dog's piss. Yeah. So a couple weeks later, I put up a uh, put up a fence, like a little white, pretty picket fence. Mm-hmm. I can't stand it. Respect people's stuff, man. I hate. It. Woo! Yeah, like good. you said, take your dog to your yard. I hate you got them a yard. damn dogs, man. Them We've damn. been on these dogs lately. Man, <laughs> I'm on fence about getting another dog. I was like, I ain't gonna do it. People with pets. And they be picking up their dog shit, and they be putting them in other people's trash cans. I say this all the time. You care like you, like you said, carry it to your house. Anyway, we're gonna move on off of that. Uh, since we talking about respect, you know, this daddy, oh man, wanted his child to respect him and uh, show respect and stop acting a fool, so he gets. On his son's live live stream, well, his me, social media. Yes, the son is on his live stream. Oh, he interrupted his son. Yes. Oh. So his son is on live showing guns and weed. Right. So dad catches him, sits him down, and starts going ham. Y'all mother thinking y'all gonna my son life up? F this, f that. And the mom in the background egging the daddy on. And apparently somebody in the live says, uh, slap your dad or told the dad to slap the son. But I think from what it seems like, one of his friends was like, slap that talking about his dad. So his dad was like, what? On live, just turns and slaps I mean, the fire out of his son. Smacks his boy. How old do you think he is? 14, 15. 14, 15. Yeah. And he starts just going ham on his son, mushing him, talking about, why I kill you, boy? And, like, just pushing his face in, uh, talking to him reckless. Okay. Basically saying, I'll kill you before I let one of these in the yeah. street kill you. Yeah, yeah, That's how he talking. And then he say, then he said the, 
ultimate. Y'all know where he at. Come help him. Come. Yeah. Pull up. Pull up. I kill y'all. I beat y'all ass too. Yeah, I ain't scared to kill no kids. <laughs> what? Sir. <laughs> sir. Hey, man. <laughs> this is, you realize this is going to live forever. On forever. The internet. <laughs> you ain't scared to kill no kids? Hey, man. This is where my new uh thought the, pattern, the new gray the new goose we call LA goose play. Yeah. <laughs> salmon color wearing yes goose. <laughs> yeah you got to first of all everybody got guns apparently your child has a gun that's i don't know I if you say. knew it or not that's what i was gonna say where'd your child get the Where guns your and the weed that's what i'm saying so while you slapping this young dude that's not all the way mentally developed yet. And you done embarrassed him in front of all his friends. Man, you got to go to sleep tonight. You're, you're, this boy can really hurt you. First, well, I'm saying it because now you just screwing him up in the head. You just slapped right. this young, I mean, full on, you slapped this man. At what point are you going to turn him against you? Yes. At, versus he ain't seeing you as helping him. Hell no. Nah. You just destroyed his reputation, basically. Uh, I would have, if I was in this man's position, we would have we would have stayed on the live. Yeah. And it would have been like, explain to me why you're doing what you're doing. Make it make sense. Make it. Thank you. Yeah. Let's talk this out in front of your friends and see what happens. Blase, blase. Not. Straight up slap. Now, off camera, man, I'm going to slap the shit at you yeah. or, or whatever. But on camera, popping this boy that's almost 18, like, he looks 15 like he's of age yeah. to where he's right there, feeling young. himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's smelling his own piss yeah. like when you, like when you, you say You ain't going to talk to me head. like that. I'm a grown man yeah. type. Uh, I think this dad, is as much as. Uh, I probably would have approved of this way back, and that's how I was disciplined. But the way I was disciplined left me really angry. Yeah. And it, it, I felt like everything had to be physical. So you disrespect me, we fight. You say something crazy to me, we fight. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, to solve it, I'm, I'm fighting you. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes down to when you just try to have a simple conversation with somebody that disagree with you, you feel like, like yeah. it's because we were disciplined, physically disciplined, like with no remorse. Right. Dude should have, he, ah, yeah. he should have took his time. Nah, he definitely should have. This is, this is one thing I like a, a thousand percent agree. I was going to say basically everything that Greg already said. Off, I would be like, oh, we're going to keep the live going, but come in real quick. Yeah. He would have looked completely different by the time we came back on because I'm going to let him know. Oh, yeah, have you lost your matter? Go back in there and sit. After I done said all in it, go back in there and sit down. We're going to talk this through in front of your friends. Now I'm going to talk some sense into you. It ain't got to be physical. You ain't got to be all the yelling. I understand the anger. But you got to control that when you seriously talking about the welfare and the safety of your child. You got to control your anger. Yeah, man. But, and like this is this is one thing and we talked about it a little bit. Speaking as a father, as a man, people always want to talk about masculinity. Here's what's understood about masculinity: it's easy to be hard. Oh yeah. People don't understand that. Men don't be understanding that. Women don't understand. It. It's easy to be hard. It's easy to be rough. It's easy to be cold, not have emotion. That is easy. Showing emotion and expressing yourself and showing vulnerability, that's the hard part. Pete, you got these dudes out here now talking about, you know, you be, make yourself vulnerable. Nah, that's a bitch move. No, you the bitch. Because that's, that shows true strength. Me and my dad was out talking one day, and I, I swear to you, I've never seen him be this powerful before in my life. It, my dad was like a like a rugged, rough dude. Like yeah. people that knew him was like, yeah, Miss Mister Nate, he don't play. Hey, I heard stories about him back in the day. Hey, he on him, my uncles, all of them were just big, strong, aggressive men. They would hunt. They all had axes and shit in back of their trucks. <laughs> like, 
just rough dudes. And yeah, I remember right. one day, um, I asked it, I asked him about his mom. I was like, How come you don't ever talk about your mom, your grandma? Like, I want to get to know. That's when I found out, like, she, my dad's mom was from Cuba. Mm. What else are we talking about that? And his explanation, he was like very vulnerable in that moment, talking about, you know, because it hurts. You know, and he just went on talking about that. Now he's. Dry face as he's telling me this, but he's being completely open about this. Yeah. Because I've been bugging him about it. He was just like, look, it hurts. You know, she got brain cancer. She got sick. You know, I feel like she left us. I was a kid. That was my best friend. You know what I'm saying? He just mm-hmm. sitting there opening up about all this. And I'm sitting there looking at him like, wow. Like, oh, yeah. this strong, tough, hard man is not scared to tell me that he's it hurts him to talk about this. Yeah, That's strength, that's masculinity. Being able to show your soft side to your family, to your kids, even to your friends. I caught a couple of my boys last week, week before. I ain't talked to, one of them I ain't talked to probably in like eight months. Other one, it's probably been a year or two. We just started calling each other out the blue. Like, hey man, just called to check in on you, how you doing? Oh man, thank you. Updating each other, got off the phone with all of them. Hey, love you, love you too, man. Mm. That's masculinity. Being hard, being tough, I kill you. That's easy. Yeah. It's so easy because mm-hmm. you grew up in it. Yeah. It's easy to be hard. So for him to sit down with his son and being that aggressive again, I get being angry. Oh yeah. But you got to check that. Like Greg said, man, you got to sit down, make this make sense to me. And by the end of this conversation, that my son. If so happened, he did. I mean, it's easy for kids to get drugs these days. But if he even had that desire, the way I'm raising him, it, it would throw me off. But if he somehow got a uh, his hand on a weapon or something, he's by the end of that conversation, he's going to realize how dangerous and stupid he is in that moment. Yeah. Because I get the, the the lack of the frontal lobe development. Mm-hmm. I dealt with that. Hell, they say you, front, frontal lobe don't completely develop until you're late, like early to mid-20s. Yep. Uh, <laughs> 25, 27. Yeah, 25, 27. I was still doing some stupid shit at 22, yeah. 23. Um, but you got to you got to approach things more level headed and more uh more mature than that. Because I saw what I saw in that video, I saw a father, one that was trying to be protective, but a father that was scared and immature. Mm-hmm. That's how it looked to me. Not in a bad way. I'm not didn't knocking him like in a negative way, but that's what I saw. The lack of being able to communicate something like that. Like if I found my son doing something like yes, I would be pissed. Mm-hmm. Extremely pissed. Actually, probably more mad than him because we're not in an area. I don't need my kids ain't even exposed to nothing like that. So the fact that you found this and doing this online. Yeah, like, you looking like, for it. Yeah, you looking for it. I would yeah. really be pissed, but you got to, you got to, <clears throat> if you can't control it in that moment. Turn everything off. Yeah. Take a day and then come back to yeah. it. And go live with your friends. Yeah. We're going to talk about this. Yeah. That that would have been cool if he would have just cut the live and then did another live with his dad. All right, y'all. He had his gun and these drugs. Yeah. First so of all, who gun is it? Mine. Okay. Not yours, right? You don't own this gun. Right. You just took, <laughs> all right. You showing off in front of your people. Who drugs? They might. They, Oh, yeah, no, no, no. My drill. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, you found yeah. my oh you found my stash? <laughs> you, found, yeah. you ain't about that life now, now is you? Something other than slapping this boy, but to Tank's point, yeah, I mean, that's probably and that let me also say this. This is probably how he knows how to discipline because that's how he was disciplined. Yeah. And I mean, and that just that's just how it goes. That's how I was, uh, I was disciplined. My dad, he was strict. He was, yeah. I thought that when as a kid, he, uh, he came off mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got whoopings when I got out of line. But I understand how he was raised. It's, it's a wonderful thing called technology. I understand how he was raised. I understand how his dad was raised. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And what his dad did to him was unnecessary. I feel like with some stuff he did to me was <laughs> unnecessary. So now I try to approach my kids completely different. Yeah. Not completely, but different enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, to all the men out there, take your time. I'm, I'm a work in progress too. Just take your time before you, uh, cause you, man. I can only imagine having a son. I don't have one. I got daughters, but the disrespect that the father probably felt 
the son doing that in his house on live and like you said we don't know but the boy might not even be exposed to it and he's like yeah uh, and that dad is probably getting up every day working that, that look speak from a from a father yes. go ahead and say it. he's probably getting <laughs> up every day working to to provide for this family i mean everything so hot water hot meals all the specific snacks you want in the cupboard in the cabinet is in there to <laughs> all the way down to salt and vinegar chips instead of these chips i make sure you have everything and you doing what you're doing that will enrage the hell out of me right so ah, him slapping him I, i'm telling y'all I, I, I it's wrong to me but at the same time, it's like you can see why it happened. As a father having a son, man, it's look, it's it's kind of primitive. It may be that way, yeah. But every like I remember, when I was what eighteen, where I got into like an argument with my dad and like walked up in his face. Yeah, I mean now looking back, like he would have handled me for sure. <laughs> but I ended up like because we was mad. I remember being like extremely mad at him. But like the next day. Cause I think I stayed at my friend's house that night. The next day, I had to go apologize to him. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, that was dead wrong. Like, yep. You know what I'm saying? But I remember, uh, I remember I was, I don't know how old I was when my dad he was explaining to me one time. He's like back. I don't know if y'all know this. Like they changed the chemical makeup of Brussels sprouts. They don't taste like they used to. No, I don't my dad know, I always but... hated Brussels sprouts. Even okay. as a kid, I hated him as a grown man. <laughs> but he was telling me one time he t- uh, he didn't want to eat his food. He was like, you know, I ain't went, when I was a kid, I ain't want to eat my Brussels sprouts. He said my daddy looked. He said his daddy looked at him and was like, "Boy, you know what kind of world we live in? I have to leave this house every day, put my life in danger, yeah, just to work a simple job yeah. to provide food for y'all. And you gonna tell me you don't want to eat it? Yep." Because that was when the, my dad was born in 46. Imagine yeah. what his dad was going through to provide <laughs> for them to eat. <laughs> Brussels sprouts. And you tell me. Yeah, you don't want to eat it. <laughs> so so with that mindset, you know, it carries over. And then, like I said, as in 2024 of being a father, I know what they went through. I know why my dad raised me the way, I, the way he did. So I now have to approach things a more, more level-headed mm-hmm. than what they were experienced or exposed to. Yeah. He definitely uh, level headed. So just take your time, breathe. I know you're gonna. I, be, it, I know you're gonna be mad, but you got to, you got to cool down first, and then approach it because, ah, dang. Yeah, uh, I mean, I did some stuff with my dad. If he found out, my any one of my both my parents, if they found out about it. <laughs> Probably deserve my teeth knocked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Well, anyway, take your time, brother. Absolutely. Uh, moving on. Uh, since we talk about parents, <laughs> first of all, and how things we're are. Gonna so- give a shout out to Goose's transitions. <laughs> <laughs> since we talk about parents and how things are supposed to be. You know the 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 right way to do things, or the the way we think things are supposed to be done. What you feel about women out here proposing to men? Man, I uh, you know what? I was leaning on one side. Like anytime I heard about this, I said, "Man, how ridiculous!" Like, what kind of dude is this? Yeah, for his wife to have to propose to him or his girlfriend or whatever. Um, but I think it's subjective. I think it de- kind of depends on the person and the relationship because a lot of guys, not even a lot, I feel, I'm going to say most guys that I know, um, most men that I've encountered with, I know it's, uh, we're very reluctant to get married. Yeah. I think most, um, men a lot of us, a lot of it comes from fear. They'll tell you, give you all the excuses in the world. A lot of it comes from fear. It just seems like a big responsibility, especially if it's not something you're looking for. Um, I ran from it. I ain't even going to lie to you. Like, uh, it'd be coming from fear, and it's that, uh, and it's the, and it's also the possibility of well, what, what, what if all of a sudden Beyonce get uh, <laughs> become single? And it's, it's it's a lot of ignorant shit that yeah, goes through a man's man. mind that makes him run from marriage. A lot of them think that it's uh, they got a. Uh, uh, 
achieve a certain goal or accomplishment in life before they get married instead of building they don't we don't a lot of us don't understand building with somebody we gotta already be a king of our castle and then we bring in a queen no that ain't how it work mm -hmm. um at least not when you're younger when you're older maybe you gotta feel like you're doing that but so i was looking at it like you know it's a bad idea for a woman to propose to a man because if he ain't ready to ask you he definitely ain't going to be ready when you ask him. And if he does say yes, there's a good possibility he's only saying yes because you asked him. Not because he was hoping you would ask him like, you know, like the vice versa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, 100%. But now that I'm older, a little more wiser, I, I, I still don't say, I, I still can't say I've encountered a relationship like this, but I could imagine the type of relationship to where a, the visual is what throws me off. As soon as I was about to say, oh, I could see a relationship swing in that direction to where they in love enough, and she was just like, you know what, baby, I'm going to ask him because I know he wants to do this, but he's scared. But the visual, the visual that you showed me of the woman kneeling down, <laughs> holding this ring up, I, no, I stand by my original statement. I can't even swing. I, I don't understand it. You have to be. Uh, what y'all saying, Patreon? I know there's a lot of women in here. Uh, what's her name? Uh John Legend, John Legend and his wife. Mm -hmm. The the way his wife is, her energy and who she is as a person. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see her doing I can see that. Her. Yeah, to, yeah. To him, because of their dynamics or whatever. That's what the, they see in public. Yeah. But at the same time, you would take it as a joke. Yeah, I would. It wouldn't be serious with with her. It would be more like, well, he ain't doing, hey, hey, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. You know? What, ab um, what about uh, Gabrielle Union and D Dwayne Wade? <laughs> it's probably the same situation, though. You would see it as goofy. Like, she ain't serious. I find Dwayne Wade goofy, period. Do you? Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. Why you find him goofy? Man, he, I don't know what happened, but, like, once he married her, uh -huh. Everything he started painting his nails and be, he became this. Does he have a trans? A uh, trans. It's a daughter, right? Because so may think he might be doing that in support. Oh, I'm, I'm just asking. I don't know. I didn't know. I don't know, I don't know either. I, I'm not <clears throat> sure. He just. It just <clears throat> seems. There seems like there's no. Uh, he has no boundaries for anything. It's I wear dresses. I paint my nails. I wear makeup. If if he wanted to arch his eyebrows, he'd justify arching his eyebrows. Mm -hmm. um, if he wanted to wear the, the hold on, I said Chrissy proposed to Jim Jones, and she's still engaged. Uh, well, two decades. They've been engaged for two <laughs> decades. Hold on, am I reading it right? She proposed to Jim Jones. They married for the last two decades. I don't know. I, I don't one I man I I really do Hold feel, on Tanya you proposed to your husband See now we got now we got the juice <laughs> Oh that's what I needed right here And then we got somebody that came to I need details Tanya how did you do it She oh she proposed okay I need I need details on that. But go, what was you saying? Uh, I well, she proposed to him, but I would think a woman w would want a man to make that decision and to give her that moment of of being asked of being yeah. asked. Now, uh, I'm I'm not sure how long Tanya was with her husband before mm -hmm. she proposed because if you with a guy 10, 15 years. Man, I'm I'm proposing to you, you know. Yeah, like you're probably out of an over ultimatum that. of like, hey, let's just do, yeah. Yeah, you're over that feeling <clears throat> of being proposed to, but um, and I and I would think a man, as a man, you want to propose to your wife. Hold on, said Chrissy proposed on national television. <laughs> Still to this day, he never made it. <laughs> That's horrible. That's horrible. That can't be true. I don't know. I don't they know anything bad, about Jim Jones. Man. I need details. Tanya. I could have sworn Maybe they she's were typing. They were married. Uh, but yeah, I for I, me being a, a the 
quote unquote, I don't know what the proper term is these days, but like the Southern gentleman, mm. it's hard for me to understand the concept of, um, uh, I, I wouldn't know how to, I don't know. It's hard for me to understand the concept of like the gesture of the man kneeling down to a woman of like, would you, you know, do me the mm. honor of being my wife, bringing all the gloriousness of a woman into my life fully and wholeheartedly. It, no, they said they ain't married. It's it's as simple as this. It's is a man opens the door for a woman. That's just that's how it works. That's how it is, and it's traditionally a, that's it's, how it is. It's a gesture. Yeah, let a woman open the door for me. I would. She'll open the door, and I. I hold the hold door it up and here. let her go. You go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But that's that southern part of us There's, that they the uh chivalry thing that they I don't know. I hopefully hopefully we have enough people with enough sense that they not trying to get rid of that. Well, that's that's the way generation. everything is becoming. Everything is getting flipped on its back now. Like there's no tradition being held up however you feel is okay is the way it's supposed to be nah man a man is supposed to do this <clears throat> a woman is supposed to do that and i mean as as far as being uh proposed to um like certain gender roles so tanya said uh she was like yes we we were together for five years and we still live together. And we were, oh, we were living together. Uh, so I took charge and brought him a ring and he still wears it. We've been together for 24 years. Did he propose though? No, she proposed. After that, did they get, like, how did the. Uh... Now, I'm re I'm finding out this with everybody oh, okay. else. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Okay, so were... after that, Tanya, did he do a, did he repropose? Did he repropose to you in front of friends or anything? Or did you propose to him in front of friends? Like, did you propose to him in the house while y'all was having dinner? Or was it a celebration and you surprised them and his dad, his family, and everybody was there to witness it? Yeah, she said they've been married for 24 years. No, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm responding oh, to somebody oh, else. Cause oh, I, together for 24 years. She didn't say married. Oh. I don't know. We're going to see. I would love to know <laughs> if you proposed to him in front of everybody yeah. as men do sometimes. Yeah, no judgment either way. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. only heard about it. Um, But, yeah, just from uh, – oh, go ahead. I interrupt you. Certain gender roles, man, are just like – and then some people, oh, there's no such thing as gender roles. Okay, I take the trash the out playing. all the time, no matter how – much trash is in the trash can. I take the trash out. Mel will take the trash and put it at the garage door and not walk it to the trash can. Goose. She takes it to the garage door? If it's getting too big. Angel. Because I'm be out of town. She'll take it put it right there. Angel pulls it out of the trash can, ties it, and leaves it by the trash can. Yeah. She don't take it. No was, but, <laughs> but I would have a problem if she did. Yeah. Just you have that's a problem. that toxic masculinity. <laughs> you would have a problem if she did. You would be wondering. I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah, I won't take it out. Yeah. You should have said something. It doesn't yeah. bother you at all. I mean, it shouldn't bother you at all. Not it shouldn't bother you at all. It doesn't bother you at all because you know that's what I'm supposed to do. That's That's what the man is supposed yeah. to propose. Your wife come home with groceries. She should come in the house. The groceries in the car. Mm -hmm. She shouldn't have to say, "Oh, okay." You yeah, stop doing what you're stop doing. doing what you're doing, and you go get the groceries. Right. So you at, it's just. Uh, she it's said, just, "Yeah, they're married." Yeah, what? We were alone. I took him to dinner, and he uh, he bought me a huge rock a year later. Oh, okay, she got the rock a year later. As a matter of fact, he just upgraded my ring and proposed again in front of my family. Thank you. <sighs> That's <Wait a> second. <laughs> <laughs> now, to my point though, <laughs> yeah. A man wants to do that. He wants to he wants to have a lady feel that yeah, that way about it. You know, have that 
top. All he proposed. Yeah. He she wanted. Said, I took charge. I'm he gonna, wanted to do this. I want my husband. He he wants me to be his wife. Yeah. This just don't know it yet. Let me go on and get <laughs> ring. He's like, all right. Yeah, let me get my stuff together. <laughs> let me start saving up. Yeah. Regular gas moving forward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he spent no more I'll, money on nothing. <laughs> after he said yes, in his head, he was like, okay, I'm going to have to do this eventually down the road. Hey. Yeah. That's dope. That's It is. It's. I'll have. Yeah. If you. If a woman wants to propose, and that's another thing. If you want to do that, do that. That's yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. yeah. If you want to like, do no, it, this do is it. what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, just uh, yeah. Like I said, my the start of my statement is like the the guys that I know. You know what? Come think of it, I'm not sure because I got two homeboys, and I bet. So one of my boys, he got married more recent, <clears throat> and I'm. I were if his wife, if his fiance or girlfriend at the time were to propose to him, because mm. he already knew this is what he wanted to do. He had the same mindset of, you know, I'm just trying to make sure I got this, got got that. And I was just like, but I, what, what's the real hold up? He was like, no, for real. I just want to make sure that I can get this, you know, the uh, real estate stuff in order mm. because I want us to be able to live in this place. You know, I was like, but y'all already together, but. I get where you come, but he was serious. He wasn't like procrastination. Mm-hmm. He was just like basically waiting on a deadline that was definitely coming. It wasn't like I'm gonna keep pushing at all. Yeah. But if he were to propose, or if she were to propose, I think he would have been like, "Nah, let me propose to you." But he wouldn't be mad about it. I don't think a man. I don't think um, men would be mad about it. I think they would feel like. She need. I need to do this for her. I mm. want her to experience me. Yeah, yeah. Down on one knee, fireworks going off. Everybody, oh, congratulations, <laughs> type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Tanks that, firing off shots yeah. in the background. <laughs> for, for example, that's Bald why eagles. people be getting remarried or having yeah. wet, another wedding mm-hmm. because the first wedding wasn't what the woman yeah. really wanted. Or after you build together, yeah. now you can have something that, that you big want. That big wedding you really, really want. And yeah. I think for men, if the, if the lady proposes, that's fine. Yes, baby, I marry you. Cool, cool, cool. In the back of that dude's head, though, he's like, you know what? There's something coming your way because I have yeah. to we, I have to do something else versus yeah, Like a you, hardwired thing. Yes, yes. That's crazy, though. Well, not crazy. Well, it is crazy. That's wild. I I just ain't never seen. Yeah, no, I'm glad. Lady. I'm glad we had somebody. I've heard about it. I never. Uh, yeah. I don't know anybody that's done it. I could have. Angel been like, you know, so and so and them did it. I you know. I don't remember. That's what's up. All oh, right, then they high school sweethearts. Y'all just a goddamn Cinderella story. Not Cinderella. <laughs> Fairy tale. Oh, so you felt <laughs> she probably felt comfortable doing yeah. it. Like she knew who this guy was, and she probably knew him. She know yeah, no she him, know and no she one. like yeah. he ain't about to propose. Yeah, like he ain't his, even his dumb ass don't know no better. That's how y'all be. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to do this, and that's gonna be that. Anyway, oh, since we talking about men and women being together, uh, there's this chat going around uh, the internet talking about women shouldn't allow their husbands or their boyfriends to walk their single girlfriends or to the car when you know they go out to dinner and that girlfriend needs to be walked to the car my husband ain't about to do that with you or my boyfriend about to walk you to the car or my boyfriend or my husband ain't about to come hang your tv at your house or help you over here or help you over there you need to find your own man for that don't be trying to use my man for that man i thought it was just walking to the car you don't went to You know, like, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> that, oh yeah, I don't know about that one, Goose. I, I feel. Because Angel got to that point where people were just asking me to do stuff. She was yeah, like, nah, yeah. you need to hire somebody. You need to go on Reddit. <laughs> that's true, too. That's happening, that's happening to no, me, No, Angel too. started like, no, no. I was like, all right. People would be like, hey, my AC ain't working, blah, 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 yeah. this. And I'd be like, all right, I, I Walk go. Walk you through it. i go mm-hmm. over. No, no, I don't went over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. To to handle situations and people start how much and i'm like this much and they're like oh man how you, you oh see no hold up now yeah this ain't this ain't 
a friend thing. It's business. Yeah. <laughs> Give me my three fifty, or I take everything I put on this off. Yeah. Or whatever. No, whatever. See, see, our group ran out of favors because it was I was always the go to ah. so much. So Angel was like, "Nah, we ain't doing this no more." Okay. Well, let's let's do this then. If you unless you want charging them, I was just like. No, but the original thing you said was okay. walking to the car. Let's walking get back to the, to the original. Yeah, I was about to say, you just take some goose shit in there. Yeah, things just started coming into. I'm like, let's add this. Let's add this on there too. The Hanging TV. Yeah. They over here talking. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> you and your friends are all at dinner, and the single lady needs, or she's leaving, and your husband gets up to yeah. walk her. Well, to like the a car. restaurant. Yeah, well, like yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that? Is that is that something women should be worried about? If we out to eat or whatever it is, if I'm around, if I'm there, none of the women are walking to the car by themselves. Yeah. Simple as that. That's just not, that has nothing to do with, oh, it, that a statement like that to me just sounds like some young, dumb bullshit. Mm. Like just some women that's young and dumb. It ain't got nothing to do with oh, what, what, why you walking her to a car? It's safety. Yeah. How you gonna feel if something happened to your friend walking to her car late at night just because you didn't want your husband to walk with him? Yeah. Now your friend over here traumatized or worse because you jealous and stupid. Yeah. We recently it was a mocha mom or I don't know one of them mom groups that Angel and all of them are in. Melanie's in it. Mm. We were leaving, and by the time I got there to pick up Angel, I was able to park up front. Greg's wife, Melanie, was parked down the street. We walking out. I didn't even ask. Angel said, Melanie, where did you park? She said, oh, I'm down here. Angel said, well, here, give me your keys because I'm right here. Go ahead and walk Melanie. I'm like, all right, because regardless, Melanie, whether it was going to be both of us or just me, she wasn't going to the car by herself. Mm -hmm. And that's anybody. If I'm, if it's one of somebody that we know, that. a friend, people leaving our house. Yeah. Anybody and everybody that leaves our house, specifically women, <laughs> Not only am I walking out, walking to the door, I'm walking them to their car. We got coyotes. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Might see a mountain lion. Yeah. Seen that bobcat one day. People, some people have morals, people. Some people really have morals and, yeah. like, aren't trying to uh, screw everything walking. So, I'm the same way. If... Um, if somebody's shit, when people leave my house, yeah, I walk to the door. I'm like, okay, make sure they get to the car. Yeah, it's just common courtesy. Uh, I will say this though, if if it's other men around, if there's another single dude around, now I would because I ran into the situation. I would be like, hey, man, walk up to the car, man. Oh yeah, I call a dude out. I quick. call out. I I'll do that. But if it's me and I'm the only guy there, or if there's other husbands there, I take the initiative. Like, oh, I walk into the car. Blase, blase. Um, also, the women, the the woman, the wife should obviously trust or have confidence in her husband. He ain't about yeah. to. Be like, hey, that's I, the I, I, got, I got you alone now, baby. What's right, up? you got to be able to trust who you with. If, if that's your <laughs> statement, then. That quick, walking it, to the car, you think it's about to go yeah. down. E even, if, even if she is trifling, you yeah. still got to be able to trust your spouse. Or if yeah. even if he's trifling, you got to trust your wife. Like, <laughs> Crazy. It's crazy the lives some of y'all out here living, man. Oh. Uh, Cause I leave the house a lot when we on tour. If I was worried about what Mel was doing when I was gone, I would go crazy. Yeah, he's calling me, be like, "Hey, man, could you go over and check on that?" Of course. Yeah. It ain't like it. Hey, don't you, don't you try nothing. Don't you try yeah. nothing. <laughs> what? Like, okay, I won't. I was, but I won't no. now. <laughs> oh, you saw me on the camera. <laughs> oh shit. Man, yeah, I don't. I don't. This, like I said, that just sounds like some. Some young dumb stuff like y'all just young and ain't I don't know. You know what's probably the issue? Women are worried about those fine friends of theirs having, you know, them fine friends that be bad, bad, and they husbands probably like or something. I guess I don't know. 
those bad individuals, you know those real. Angel got some friends that she'd be like, no, that bitch is bad. But Marcus, make sure you walk her to her car. Make sure she all right. All right. Like, <laughs> they ain't worried about us, though. Those women are worried about having babies with NBA, NFL players. Mm -hmm. How you feel about that? Those women that be having multiple children with multiple athletes and entertainers. Mission accomplished. I do, too. <laughs> that was another <laughs> subject. See, I kind of I, I transitioned it over there to that. That was my other uh, topic. They uh, that the Instagrams be feeding me women out here having all these children by multiple athletes. I forgot the young na lady's name, but she has two kids. Both kids are NFL, no NBA player kids, and they were talking about women doing that. And also, why do the NBA or athletes entertainers why do they choose the same woman? To have a baby by like they ain't those women know where to be it ain't even Still, big <laughs> no i mean but at the same time if uh i know the late i know your baby mama yeah i'm not i'm worth millions <laughs> right you, worth, you just got her pregnant your child two years old yeah. and i'm like I'm gonna get her pregnant too. You cool? You you y'all don't <laughs> that's just your baby mama, right? Yeah, that's just my baby mama. Yeah, All right. Mean, well, I'm about to out of the, the billions sea, yeah, the sea of, of women, women <laughs> you choose this girl that's already had my child. And I play with you, or we in the same league, or we in the same arena. Yeah. Birthday party be awkward as hell. Awkward as hell. <laughs> but yeah, I do feel mission accomplished for women that are able to um, do that and, uh, I mean, set themselves up, really, because, I yeah. mean, you, ain't nothing wrong with it, but what if she had two kids by a dude working at Blockbuster? Oh, Blockbuster ain't even around no more. Nah. Imagine that, though. He's probably our age or older. <laughs> 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 nah, he's older, definitely. <laughs> uh, I meant Foot Locker. Imagine him just, hey, I get you some shoes. My baby stay with the new kicks. Stay kicked up. Hey, she got one at Foot Locker and one at Ch no, is it Champs? Champs, yeah. I, you'll be like, baby, what the Versus hell two, two multi-millionaires. Versus two LeBron James, and you got LeBron, what's his last name would be? <laughs> LeBron Smith. You got James Jackson. James. <laughs> uh, if you could do that, do that. I hey. Yeah, I don't know. As far as the, I don't know that world. Yeah, it seems. It does seem like they pass around. Like uh, somebody in the comments said, they have a type. But I mean, I don't know. I just want my man. F f yeah, they said the, dudes be groupies too. <laughs> the reason I married Mel or I dealt, I felt comfortable with Mel was I was like, man, this girl would take care of my children with or without me. Right. Right. Her morals, who she is as a person, she's going to do right by my kids. Yeah. It doesn't seem like these guys even be knowing these females, they they don't even like know who they are, where they're from, their parents, their childhood, their brothers, their sisters, like to get some overall knowledge of, oh, you you got a you yeah. got a good head on your shoulders, other than, you know, the other head type situation. But it just seemed like they just they it's a it's a bad looking girl. She look fine, nice body. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna impregnate this one. Then y'all just be raw dogging, just random. It's wild to me. Yeah, I'm so glad I'm married. <laughs> it's, it's wild. That somebody said it to date in 2024. How do you? I was so scared growing up, man, to have sex without a condom. It was terrifying to me. Yeah. It was wild. And just to know that these grown men. And grown women are at the are in these environments where everybody is obviously 
having sex with everybody because everybody's <laughs> having everybody's baby. Yeah. Man, you don't think she got some or he don't got some or yeah. what's the man money? This is why they say money is the root of all evil because it 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 allows you to just act reckless. Yeah, they, it does seem ABI very, yeah, very reckless. Reckless. Shooting off, just acting reckless. Anyway, moving on. Let's uh, talk about what everybody's talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. People talking about uh, the P. Diddy stuff. Oh, I was going to say oh, Cam. Cam. Oh, they acting reckless over there, too. Yeah. So, Cam Newton has a 707 league and uh, created a 7707 league. He had two coaches that was helping him. The two coaches that was helping him build the two coaches that was helping him build the league felt like they weren't um, valued by Cam. So they left the 707 league and created their own team. Correct? So then mm-hmm. at this 707 uh, game they were having, Cam saw them in the parking lot. Cam got out the car talking trash, um, you know, put money on this, put money on that, talking cash money to the other two coaches that he used to coach with. They ended up playing against each other, and Cam steadily talking trash, steadily mm-hmm. talking trash. Apparently you know, they were too. They were I've too. I've seen videos. It looks like they were talking trash. Yeah, they were talking he trash back. back and forth, yeah. But my inside knowledge of who Cam Newton is – He's a trash talker. He's very yeah. arrogant. I mean, you six six. Goose knows people in the in that world yes. of coaching and all those teams and stuff. And they've told me, you know, he he's a bully, basically. Like six six. Two fifty. Two fifty. I mean, NFL yeah. star. And he was like that before that. He was yeah. like that in high school. You know, imagine talk, talking trash. He uh, probably like an inch and a half taller than me and about 20 pounds heavier. And just solid. So Solid, trained athlete. <laughs> stupid. So he's talking sideways. I tell people, and I tell y'all all the time, take your time. Don't let somebody get up under your skin. But that's hard, especially when you're around kids that yeah. you coach. And kids, your kids, and people that you know, it's hard to be s- spoken to in that f- manner as if you're a little boy and not defend yourself. So that's what basically happened. Cam and them was getting at it, talking trash to each other. So much so, much so one of the other coaches walked up because Cam said, I'll come down there. Cam started walking towards them, and the other guy met him at the top of the stairs. The other coach wasn't really – he say he wasn't really aware. That's his brother, yeah. Yeah, of what was going on. But if y'all so talking claimed, trash, yeah. y'all know what's happening. So Cam grabbed old boy y'all saw and then yeah. the other coach. So, yeah, Cam grabbed. But the ongoing thing is Cam Newton fights off attackers or yeah. beat up the attackers. Cam – it From that story – look, I wasn't there. I don't know. Allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly, 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 we got to keep saying that these dudes were saying that he was the aggressor yep. first, and I can believe it. <laughs> uh, he was the aggressor first, and they just reacted to him getting grabbed. Yeah. One thing you're not doing. Look, this is one thing I'll say. Everybody, he handled them. He handled them, Cam. Even if he ain't playing no more, he still trains every day, probably. Oh, of course. He trains a lot more than the average person. Yeah. He trains a lot more than probably people working out heavily. That's not a professional athlete because that's just part of his lifestyle. Mm-hmm. This is one thing, one of the things I'll say, everybody's like, that hat won because it never came out. This is one thing I said back when people was trying to throw out the shade. They always trying to attack uh, Russell Wilson. Mm. They calling him South, calling him Miss, calling him Matt. Just like Cam Newton, Russell Wilson is a quarterback. Yep. Try to run up on that man if you want to. Yeah. He is a trained professional athlete in peak physical can in his worst shape he's mm-hmm. in better shape than 90 percent of the people walking this planet yeah <laughs> it's like these dudes are not soft no they are big they are strong i saw james harden sunday uh, he literally walked right in front of me mm. james harden don't look small but he don't look that tall mm. james harden is apparently six six five it's, the thing said he was six five but he's got to be six six mm. 
Because when he walked past, I'm looking up at him. Dang. And this dude is not skinny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, James Harden looked like he oh, got yeah. some size to him. Because uh-huh. I, I I was standing and talking to my boy. He was about to pull off in his car. And I was like, dang, here go James Harden. So he's walking up. I, like, stepped out of his way. I mean, he was being kind of a prick to everybody. But I think he was just trying to get to the wherever he was going. I didn't say nothing to him. Everybody was like, hey, James. He was yeah, straight up just – but I ain't going to judge him in that moment. Ain't no telling. But again, professional athlete. Should like whoop this ass. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Slanging me all over. Man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, these athletes, like, again, I don't know what you do in that situation. If I see somebody grab my brother, I don't care who it is. I don't care how big he is, how small. You grab my brother, you're going to have to deal with me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you know, one of my biggest fears is having to try to go with Tyson. If I see him grab my brother, we just both getting our ass whooped together. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. understand. And that's the thing I mean, about it. My brother's it. enormous, so I ain't got to worry about that. But. That's the thing about it, though. Like, with especially men, yeah, you, I mean, you, if you cut from that cloth, you're not going to allow another man to talk to you any type of way. And you're going you gonna to have to. You, in in your mind, you're like, oh, I have to fight this guy. There's no way you talk to me yeah. like this and just walk away from the whole situation as if, like dude said in the video, oh, you thought it was sweet over here. You thought, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. you might handle us, but you know if you talk to me like that anywhere, you're going to have to see me, yeah. period. So ah, yeah, it's, it's, that's it's, just how it goes, and yeah. that's just how it is, and you got to – Cam should have known to me. Yeah, Cam, Cam should have. Yeah, <laughs> you you a NFL all star. Why are you talking shit yeah. to these dudes? I seen now. Then he be saying put money on. They were like he always talking about put money on. Like we know you got yeah. millions of dollars. So at this age, for me, it's gonna take it's gonna take a lot for some words to get to me to turn mm-hmm. physical. I mean, it's going to take a lot. I ain't going to say it can't happen, but it would take a lot. But with the videos, all the videos I saw, like any sport, you know, it's competitive. We talked about this on here before, how crazy these kids' sports be, just oh, with, yeah. uh, the adults. Like somebody said in the comments, everybody need to apologize. Cam need to apologize to the kids and the parents. The coaches already did. Everybody need to apologize to these kids and these coaches. But the environment that they in, I saw video after video where – the coaches are letting their kids talk trash to Cam Newton. Yep. They talking trash to the other coaches. They talking trash to the other players. There got to be some type of – I understand it's competitive. I understand it's football. But there got to be some type of professionalism. Yeah, you got to respect some good, the, the, yeah, 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 good sportsmanship. Like, beat them on the field. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I understand. It start, and that's how it starts off. It's all fun and games. Mm. You got to understand, Cam Newton is used to talking trash – to other trash talkers that's in his same league. Mm-hmm. Why is he engaged? I understand. I see how it could get to him eventually if everybody's talking trash. But, again, I don't know, Cam. I don't know these coaches. <laughs> All this is alleged, 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 alleged. Yeah. Who's got a little bit of an inside tip? <laughs> you In those environments, talking trash is going to – there's always somebody that's going to call you out on you talking trash and it's going to be come see me i'm yeah. i'm we fighting no matter you could be oh man you know we playing no nah, uh, don't say yeah. that now uh, nah, keep that same yeah, energy. Yeah. anytime somebody say keep that same energy yeah. that means they are letting words turn physical yes <laughs> now we all should be able to not let anybody get up on our skin like that and unfortunately that's not the way it's gonna work yeah and that's that could have solved all that. Cause if it was me out there, you know me, I'd be like, "Oh, Cam, whatever, man, <laughs> whatever, man, well, man, <laughs> let's go play some ball, you know, do this, get yeah. on the gridiron, let's yeah. go, man. <laughs> it is what it is." And Goose be like, "I ain't play, boy. <laughs> Come on, man, see you play, boy." <laughs> hey, I would have, boy, I would have went straight for his ankles. Yeah. <laughs> he I don't think he would grab him either. Nah, you I would have right. hold I can't like dislocate a, a shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> he would have kicked me out. Yeah. Get off of me. <laughs> hey, that's wild. But 
Yeah, man. It all boils down to let people get under your skin and then the way you react and all that other stuff. I can say, though, I do commend Cam for not even throwing one punch. He didn't. He didn't throw a single punch. He restrained them dudes as much as he could. Yeah. And he and was, finally other people got in there and yeah. broke it off. Because he could have. One of the kids threw a punch. And but one I the think they were I with think. Cam. I think that yeah, that's kid what I'm was saying. trying yeah. to help Cam. Yeah. Yeah. And see, and that, sh- that, that shows you mm-hmm. it trickles down. That kid. Threw a punch at that coach. Does he have a son? Was that his son? I don't know. It don't matter what it was. That's another coach. Stay in your lane and let them coaches in Madoz do what they're going to (laughs) do. But that kid, somebody could have came and hit him. him. A grown man could have hit him. A grown man would have hit him. Then there would have been all this and all that because y'all want to talk shit and get the fighting in front of these kids. That's why I don't let play uh, spades get played in my house. Oh, spades get, yeah. Me and my wife almost broke up because <laughs> she reneged. No, nah, she was just she wasn't playing right, and I'm like, <sighs> on the way home, we just drive home. I'm like, man, she... <laughs> we were mad as hell. I that was teaching the kids how to play spades uh, this past weekend at one of the events Angel had to go to. Yeah, trying to teach the Sakai Marcus. Anyway, fam, uh, we gonna get up off here. Goose. Oh yeah, Where we yeah. At? Oh, yeah, we is on there. Go on, let them know where they can. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. But anyway, you can catch me on IG. That's G O L Z B Y. Uh, Building with Goose on YouTube. Um, you can buy my merch at underreptmerch.com and check my wife out at underreported on YouTube. Um, and join our Patreon. She be following these cases, she be having the paperwork the real court case paperwork so you can read it for yourself or just catch on TikTok and she'll explain everything there. Um, Patreon is patreon.com slash slash I'm not a lawyer, but you did. See, I've I've been doing it for two years before I got a goose. Mm. Uh, Hey, y'all can find me on Instagram and Marcus on the gram, Facebook and Marcus on the book, TikTok and Tank Don't Talk. You can find my beard and body butter called Man Shit. You can go to M-A-N-S-H-Y-T dot com and check that out and if you're listening you can uh watch this on youtube tanksley tv let us tell a podcast and if you're watching you can listen to this across all podcast streaming platforms and of course join me and angels patreon if you ain't already in the family it's a uh, patreon.com slash that chick angel five dollars a month mm. or less than sixty dollars a year it's a little bit cheaper when you do it for the year so go on sign up for both of them patreons you're gonna get a good time uh Till next time, fam, we'll holler at y'all. Yep.